Node.js is a JavaScript server-side runtime. It is a popular tool for almost any kind of project. As you may know, a Node.js application runs in a single process without creating a new thread for every request. So if you have CPU-intensive operations, then this could be a complete disaster for your app. In this video, I'll show you this problem in action and how it can be fixed. First, let's look at the very basic web server. Here we have two endpoints, blocking, that calculates the Fibonacci number, and non-blocking. Let's run the web server and see them in action. We need to type node index.js. Now the server is running. We open Postman and call them. For example, for the blocking, we send a request. It calculates a Fibonacci number using CPU and takes from 2 to 4 seconds to respond. Here is the result. The non-blocking endpoint responds in milliseconds and it is important. Alright, now let's call these endpoints in a loop as if they were called by our users. There are different tools for load testing and measuring performance. I prefer Apache JMeter for it. So let's open the testing plan I had already created. File, open, blocking, here is. In short, it does exactly the same. It calls the blocking endpoint one time per second and calls the non-blocking endpoint five times each second. Results are collected under the view result item, so let's open it and start the testing. So we'll click here. Here is our non-blocking requests. And now we can see that uh, the response time for our non-blocking requests has increased from milliseconds to several seconds for each call. So now, instead of getting immediate response, we, just like our users, have to wait seconds for a response. Let's open Postman and try it on our own. Let's send a request. It's milliseconds. And again, you see that the response time really depends on whether a blocking request is currently running on the server. This proves a major drawback of Node.js as a single-threaded runtime. Whenever there is a heavy computation request, Node.js would set up a block on other requests on the thread, causing an overall delay. In a world where Twitter handles hundreds of thousands of requests in a second, I find our performance to be kinda unacceptable. Alright, now when we know the problem and can reproduce it, let me show you how to fix it. I'm going to use a worker thread model in order to spawn additional threads for parallel processing of incoming requests. This will unblock our event loop and allow our server to execute multiple requests at a time. First, we need to add a wrapper for our worker so it can be easily called. I created a worker wrapper file and going to export a simple get Fibonacci number function. So actually in this file we import the worker threads module, we initialize an instance of a worker, and we pass the number parameter as an argument for this worker. Worker.js is going to contain the code we want to execute. The message handler will return the result value for the wrapper with the resolve function and the error handle will return an error if there is any. Second, let's look at the worker.js file. It only contains three lines of code. Import the module, import the original function that calculates a Fibonacci number and sends a calculated value back to the receiving side. Finally, let's make sure we updated the index.js. Now we call the get Fibonacci number from the worker so here we need to input the wrapper function instead. So it should be worker wrapper. All right. Since the wrapper returns a promise, we need to mark the function as sync and call it with the await. Sync and the await and save it. And this is it for development. Let's start the web server again with the node.index.js. It's running. We go back to Apache JMeter, 
clear the results and start the performance testing. Now we can see that Node.js does not block our non-blocking requests anymore. The response time is milliseconds and the blocking requests also work as normal. Okay, let's open Postman and try it on our own. We send a non-blocking request and get the response immediately. So let's send some of them. Okay. As for the blocking request, it takes a few seconds to process them. Just as a matter of interest, let's increase the number of requests we're sending. So we open the Gmeter, we stop it. Let it be 25 non-blocking requests and 5 blocking. We save the testing plan, we clear the previous results and start it again. As you can see, we have a lot of requests running now and the web server works as normal. And just for the comparison, this is how it worked before and this is how it works now. And this is it. It was great having you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.